Hello there, and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to take a look at some GCSE grade 8 or 9 vectors questions. Now, these are some of the toughest questions there is in GCSE maths, and they use ratios, they use uh, straight lines, parallel lines, stuff like that. So hopefully today we're going to get a feel for the topic and basically how it works. Before we get into the video, however, I would like to just quickly do a little shout out for this channel. It's called the GCSE Guru Guide and they're a new channel. They've only just started and they do some fantastic content. All aspects of GCSEs, not just math, so they do French, English and so on. And they also do videos on how to keep productive. So this is their channel, the GCSE Guru Guide. They have an Instagram page, so feel free to follow that. And yeah, I would seriously recommend you check these out. Okay, let's get on with the questions. So this first one is sort of a standard question of this type, and it is the easiest one that we're going to be looking at today. Let's just remind ourselves what a vector is. It's something that describes a point in space and it has a direction. So in our diagram here, this A is a vector as it has a magnitude, which is A, and it has a direction, which is the arrows. So the direction is the arrow. The length is sometimes called the magnitude. Finally, something we need to know about ratios. If we have a ratio like this, so the ratio of A to B is X to Y, where X and Y are normally numbers, this tells us that A divided by B is X divided by Y. And this is sort of the fundamental rule of ratios that we need to know. Right, let's get on with this question then. We're told that the vector O to A, so that's the distance from O to A and it's directed is A. O to B is B. Now, this is the important part. P is the point on AB such that the ratio AP to P to B is 1 to 3. So let's go ahead and draw that on. P is probably somewhere around here. And we're told that O to P is K 3A plus B. So let's draw that one on as well. Right, because it's going from O to P, it's directed this way. And we're told it's K 3A plus B. And our goal is to find the value of k. So k is just a constant. So what does p do? Well, it splits the line AB into four parts. So the point p splits the line AB into four parts, where AP is a quarter, because it's one of the parts. So it's a quarter of AB. And PB is three quarters of AB. Note that if we add AP and PB, we just get back to AB. So that's all good there. Let's use what we know. And let's find AB. Well, AB, as a vector, is nothing more than the vector A to O plus the vector O to B. Now let's just pause there and have a think about what the vector A to O is. If we know that O to A is A, then a to o must be minus a, because we're going in the opposite direction. So we're going this way, so that's minus a. So this simply equals, well, minus a, and o to b we know is just b. So I'm just going to write this as b minus a for convenience. Okay, amazing. So now we need to find a to p. We know that a to p is a quarter of a to b. Right, that's what we learn up here. And a b we now know is b minus a. So we get that a to p is just a quarter of b minus a. And now to find o to p, right, the vector o to p is simply the vector o to a plus the vector a to p. And we know what O to A is, it's just A, and we now know what A to P is, because it's right here. So it's a quarter B minus A. Okay, and we can simplify this slightly. So A is just the same as 4A over 4, and we've got a plus a quarter B minus A still. 
and we can bring the full a over full inside the bracket so we get 3a plus b and assuming I've not made any mistakes there that should be all good great so this tells us that our value of k is a quarter great let's move on to the next question right question two it's getting a little bit trickier now so a b c d e f is a regular hexagon with center o we're told a few things. We're told the vector O to A, so that's from the center to this point A, is the length A, O to B is B, M is the midpoint of BC, and X is the point on AB extended such that the ratio AB to B to X is 3 to 2. So let's extend the line AB. And of course you'd use a ruler and x is the point on a b extended such that a to b b to x is 3 to 2 okay so it probably looks something like this where this is x right what we need to do prove that e m and x are on the straight line so in order to do this we need a few things so for three points to be on the same straight line we need two lines to be parallel and they share a common point. Okay, so this is what we need to show. So for E, M and X to be on the same straight line, we need two of the lines to be parallel, where two of the lines share a common point. So in this case, we're going to show that E, M and E, X are parallel. And how do we show that lines are parallel? Well, we show that one is a multiple of the other. Okay, so we're going to show that one is a multiple of the other, and then hopefully we should be good from there. Okay, so we've got our goal in place. Now, this is a regular hexagon, so there's a few things we can do straight away. The line OB is parallel to the line FA, which means that this vector here is nothing more than B, and we can repeat this process. We can see that A to O is parallel to B to C, which tells us that the vector B to C is just A. So, the vector b to c equals the vector a to o, or rather o to a equals c to b, but that's fine. And so that tells us that that is a. Similarly, this line here, e to o, is also b, as in the vector. So e to o equals b. And that's for the same reason. Because this is a regular hexagon, all the sides are equal, and therefore the distance from the center to E is the same as the distance from the center to B. Okay, so we want to work out E to X and E to M. So let's start with E to M, because that's going to be slightly easier. So E to M is just E to O plus O to B. Okay, this is just standard vector stuff here. We're going up here. So maybe I'll draw it side by side. We're going up here, up here, and then down here, so we're adding the vector b to m. e to o is just b, o to b is just b, and what is this vector b to m? So let's just come off to the side. Well, if c to b equals a, then b to c equals minus a. Also, m is the midpoint of bc. We, we're told that here. So this tells us that B to M is half of B to C. So B to M equals one half B to C, which equals minus a half A. Okay, so we can add this on here. And therefore we get that E to M is just 2B minus a half A. Right, so we've calculated E to M, so we're almost there. But what is E to X? Well, e to x is just e to o plus o to b plus b x. So again, we're going up here, up here, and this time we're going this way. Again, e to o is just b, o to b is also b, but what is b to x? Well, recall that we have this ratio here. a, b to b to x is 3 to 2, so this tells us that the line AX, okay, so I'll write this down, AB to B to X equals 3 to 2, tells us that A to X is split into 
five pieces. And again, by basic rules of ratios, we get that a to b over b to x equals three to two. Right, but this tells us that bx equals two thirds of a to b. And again, I should really have vectors here. Okay, well, what is a to b? a to b is simply a to o plus o to b. So I'll write that here, a b equals a o plus o to b. And a to o is just minus a because we're going the other way. O to b is b. So in total we get that the vector bx is two thirds of b minus a. So in total then we get that e to x equals 2b plus 2 thirds of b minus a. Okay, and simplifying this up we get 2 thirds 4b minus a. You can check this for yourselves. So we've got e to x is 2 thirds 4b minus a. And now we need to come back to this side and simplify it up. Ideally we want a bracket 4b minus a here. So let's factorize, and this comes out to be a half. Again, you can check. So what have we got? We've got ex equals 2 thirds of 4b minus a, and we've got em equals a half, lots of 4b minus a. So we've got that ex is a multiple of em, and they share a common point e. So therefore, E, M, and X are on the same straight line. And we're done. Okay, then final question. And I think this is about as hard as it gets with vectors. So here we go. Let's have a go. We're told the vector O to A is 5A. That's fine. OB is 2B. C is the point on OA such that O to C to C to A is 4 to 1. So that's going to be somewhere up here, uh, our point C there. D is the point on AB, such that AD, D to B is 1 to 2. And the line OB is extended to point E. So these are key facts here. Given that C, D and E are on the same straight line, find BE. Again, similar approach to last time. We need to use the fact that C, D and E are on the same straight line in order to find BE. So our goal is to find CD and CE. Use the fact that they are on the same straight line to find BE. So this first fact, O to C to C to A equals 4 to 1. This tells us that C to A equals 1 fifth of O to A. And of course, O to A is just 5A, so this is 1 fifth of 5A, which just equals A. So that means this vector here is A. Right, good start. Next, we need to find this vector here, A to D. Again, similar method using the ratio. So AD, D to B equals 1 to 2. This tells us that A to D equals one third of AB. Again, keep forgetting the vector signs, but you get the idea. But what is the vector A to B? Well, to get there, we need to go from A. We go this way, and then we go this way. So this is minus 5A, and this is just 2B. So it's a third of minus 5A plus 2B. Right, now we're in a position to find CD. So the vector CD, this is just CA, add A to D. Okay, but CA is just A, and A to D is this one we've just worked out here. A third minus 5A plus 2B. And again, we can factorize the A to get minus 2a plus 2b. Okay, so let's clean this up and we will go up to the top. Right, so this is where we're at. We're still trying to find ce. So let's do that. Ce is 
Well, C to A plus O to B plus B to E. And don't forget, B to E is the one we're trying to find. Okay, so let's just leave that as that for now. C to O. Well, because C to A is A, this must mean that this is 4A. And because we're going the opposite way, this must mean that it's minus 4A. O to B is 2B. And then we're still trying to find this BE. Right, so now we're going to use the fact that they're on a straight line, C, D, E on the same line. We must have that the vector C, E is a multiple of C, D. So let's say that, well, C, E equals K times C, D. But we know what C, D looks like. It's just a third minus 2A plus 2B. So let's write this in. It's a third times k, and I'm just going to write it the other way around. So this here is one expression we have for CE. But we also have another one here. So let's have a look. Right, now it's just a case of applying some straightforward algebra to find BE. So we have a third k, 2B minus 2A, equals, I'm going to write it the other way around again, so 2B minus 4A plus BE. We can multiply by 3. So this tells us that k, 2b minus 2a, so this equals, well, 6b minus 12a plus 3 lots of our vector, be. And expanding out, we get 2bk minus 2ak equals the same thing. Right, now comparing, we see that minus 2ak must be equal to minus 12a. And from this, we can see that k equals 6. So 12b equals 6b plus 3be. So this tells us that be equals 2b. And we are done there. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please think about subscribing if you enjoyed. It really helps me out. And I do put a lot of effort into these videos. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time.